Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We are so glad you joined us this morning. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. For those of you who suffer from rosacea, the effects can be overwhelming in ways that you might not imagine. There is help. Yay! And we'll explain. Plus, our Be the Change series showcases how the Metropolitan Life Foundation is working with LISC, Local Initiatives Support Corporation, helping women reclaim their lives through financial support and education. All right, and we're in the kitchen. I love this for a quick bite with Chef Ralph Pagano, and I hear, you know what I hear? What? Rice is nice. Rice, Rice is, is nice. nice. I like that. <laughs> it all starts right now on The Balancing Act. There's nothing like an air of confidence, looking good and feeling good inside. But what if you had a skin condition on your face? Would that impact your self-confidence? We're about to discuss the common chronic inflammatory skin condition called rosacea with our guest, board certified dermatologist, Dr. Dimitri Palseski. Good morning. Good morning, thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Let's talk about rosacea. What exactly is it, doctor? Rosacea is a chronic inflammatory disorder that can give you redness to your face mm -hmm. and can make you flush and give you pimples and give you bumps. And it's interesting because one in 20 Americans have it, which is about 16 million people. That's a lot. It is, but yet it's so underdiagnosed. And people that have rosacea, the problem with it is, is that their perception of themselves and the people that look at them often give them a negative impact. And let's yeah. talk about that perception because here, the recent Face Values Global Perceptions Survey mm -hmm. sponsored by Galderma Laboratories shows that many ways in which rosacea takes a deep emotional toll on sufferers. That's amazing, I mean, it really does impact them. Tremendously, more than we ever thought. And actually what they did was is they looked at 7,000 people across eight different countries. And so in all these different countries, they found that there was a common thread people with redness were judged differently. They found that they were looked at to be less uh, attractive. Mm. They were found to have um, less of an ability to have a date or to go out with somebody or to get a promotion at a job. And because of that, it really affected the self-esteem of the person that had rosacea and also their social interactions with, all of it, with everybody around them. And we did a quick poll about that same thing we're talking about and I'd like our viewers to take a look. Shall sure. we? Let's do that. What are your first impressions of these people on this picture? Bad skin. I would say the lady needs a, a makeover. They look clean cut except for the face. Uh, maybe sunburn? They don't look too happy. They need to change their skin. If it's an allergic reaction, get some kind of cream to clear it up. If I was a woman, if I had to go out, then I'd put on makeup. <laughs> would you hire this person or do they look successful to you? I wouldn't say I wouldn't hire them but I'd say they aren't terribly concerned with appearance and it would depend on the office, you know, um, culture. I mean, there's no doubt that it can really affect someone's self-esteem. So my question to you is, if someone has rosacea, doctor, what can they do? I mean, it seems like we need more awareness and compassion for that matter. Oh, absolutely. Only one in 10 people, or 10% of people that have rosacea even know that they have it or were diagnosed by a dermatologist. Really? Uh, so you have to go seek treatment or find uh, there has to be support groups and more education so that people can treat their disease so that it doesn't get worse. So why are they misdiagnosed? What's going on here? Why don't they know? Well, rosacea is challenging because it can look like other diseases of the skin. Mm. It could look like acne and actually half of pe the people that have rosacea think they have acne. So when they start treating their perceived acne and they make the rosacea worse, they don't understand why. Oh and then there's trigger factors. So there are certain things that make rosacea flare, and it's all the good things. It's, it's the uh, spicy foods that you want to eat, it's the red wines. Uh, if you're emotionally upset, it makes you flare or flush. If you wear certain makeups, it all makes it worse. There's also some research that suggests that there's a mite that lives on all of our skin called Demodex, mm -hmm. and that mite has been shown to be found in greater quantities in people with rosacea, which can potentially trigger it even more. So we know it's a chronic disease. Can you medicate it? Can you do something? Are there treatments? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Once you find an accurate diagnosis, it can be treated. Great. With what? Well, there are two, a few different options out there, and unlike over-the-counter medicines, these are actually FDA-approved to calm down all of the symptoms of the redness. Mm -hmm. Sulantra cream 
topical medicine you apply once daily, and within two weeks you'll start to see a reduction within those bumps. There's a, a oral medicine called Oratia capsule, okay. and Oratia is fantastic because it works from the inside out. It's an anti-inflammatory that calms down the surface changes. And then for persistent redness, Merveso gel. You put it on and it can last up to 12 hours. And doctor, what else should people know about these medications? Like all medicines, side effects are possible. Sure. For Sulantra cream, you can have some uh, application site irritation, some stinging, some burning with Merveso gel. They can be very similar as well. There can be some stinging, some redness, some tingling. You can get a little bit of irritation. And for the oral medicine, you can sometimes see a little bit of diarrhea. You can see some soreness to the throat or the nose, uh, possibly uh, some increase in liver enzymes. And and every now and then maybe a little high blood pressure. But again, I want to go back to the fact that if you suspect you have rosacea or you don't know, it's really important to get that accurate diagnosis from a board certified dermatologist. Correct, doctor? Yes, correct. Because rosacea gets worse over time. And if you can treat it early, you can control the symptoms, you can watch the trigger factors and learn what they are, you can minimize all of the redness and the bumps and the pimples. Fabulous. Thank you so much. My Thank pleasure. you for what you do. And to find out more about rosacea and treatment options, you can go to sulantra.com or our website, balancingact.com. The coaches helped me to write a better resume. They gave me great advice as far as um, how to budget my money. You guys have been so helpful. Um, you have gotten me to a point to where I didn't think I was going to be able to get to. You guys encouraged me, and I just appreciate the relationships that we have bonded and built because of your help. It's been a hard road, but it's been awesome. I've just come so far. <laughs> Powerful and positive changes are sweeping across the nation and corporate America is playing a vital role in making it happen, helping those in need realize their dreams. Today's Be the Change celebrates the combined accomplishments of MetLife Foundation and the Local Initiative Support Corporation, or LISC. And joining us to share the good news is April Hawkins, head of U.S. programming for MetLife Foundation, and Sung Kim, program director for LISC, and from Chicago, Jennifer Castanon, client of Mujer. Avanzando or Advancing Women. Welcome, ladies. We're Thank so you. happy to have Hi. you here. Thank you. Jennifer, let's begin with you. Not so long ago, things weren't looking bright. I mean, tell us about those early struggles. I was. I was struggling. Um, I became a single mom. I, of three, right? Of three. Okay. I was making the minimum wage, and I had to become the head of the household, which it was really hard for me. Mm. Um, I was struggling financially, so there was a lot of changes in my life. And how did these two, MetLife Foundation and LISC, really come in and help you? Well, they helped me uh, clear in a lot of my credit score. They helped me to create a budget plan, which it was great for me. Yeah. I, that's what was my problem. I was overspending, even though I had an income, I was spending more than what I was making. April, when it comes to this kind of situation and finances, um, how can you come in MetLife Foundation, and not just in Chicago, but nationwide, and help women? Well, we have been committed, or our parent company, MetLife, has been committed to communities for almost 150 years. And just recently, MetLife Foundation decided that it wanted to help women like Jennifer and focus on financial inclusion, which is really just simply about making sure that people have the right financial tools and products to improve their lives. So important. Absolutely. And so we're partnering with LISC and also other really wonderful nonprofits all across the country that are helping families and women and small small towns and big cities all across the country. That's huge. And Sung, before I get your insights, I'd like our viewers to hear how Lisk helped one young woman overcome her obstacle. And let's take a look at that right now. I was just at a standstill in my life and I just really didn't know what to do. I just wanted to change a lot of things. It used to be a time if things weren't working my way, I would walk away from it. But I read somewhere that it said the biggest regret in life is not trying. So, you know, I would tell anybody, just don't give up. So touching. Tanae Smith got a better job. She's happy. Her family is benefiting. And how else is Lisk 
and MetLife Foundation changing lives like this? Well, LISC works to help families in distressed neighborhoods, and one of the ways that we do that is by helping people manage their finances. Um, we do that through our financial opportunity centers who are located in the neighborhoods and really work with people on budgeting and building their credit, also access to financial products like credit builder loans um, and car loans as well. You know, Jennifer, I learned earlier that you have a special dream. I want to know what that dream is and how these two foundations helped you make that happen. My dream is to be a homeowner. Um, I want to bring space for my kids. Um, currently, we're living in a two-bedroom apartment, so it's kind of hard. Um, and they help me by clearing my credit. Uh, I have a credit score now of 718, yes. which is really good. <laughs> um, that's huge. So that's my short-term goal. My long-term goal is becoming a business owner. Um, I'm currently an office manager for a cleaning company, so I'm looking forward in that field to become a business owner of a cleaning company. Huge dreams. You are making it happen. That's what's so incredibly important that, to take note of. And April, the, the MetLife Foundation is there to improve financial inclusion, but it, you're looking at people that have the desires and the hopes, but they don't have the means, right? Exactly. And one of the ways that we're able to help them is to partner with organizations like LISC and so many others across the country. And it really doesn't end with the money. It's also um, the employee base that we have. We have a very dedicated, passionate employee base who want to advance financial inclusion and they're willing to roll up their sleeves and lend their time and talent to help out. Great, and Sung, uh, people are watching right now, viewers are watching, reach out to them, tell them through me how they shouldn't be afraid to make the first step. That's absolutely right. I mean, it's never too late to take a hold of your finances, so I would say, People should start by writing out their vision, writing out their goals, and make a plan to get there. And don't hesitate to stop into one of our financial opportunity centers or find a local trusted advisor in your own area. And Sung and April, where can viewers find out more? Well, they can look at MetLife Foundation's website, which is metlife.org. And Sung, how about you? Lisk.org forward slash F-I-W-B. Wow, well, I wanna thank you for coming in showing how to empower, and I want to thank you for your story thank and you. encouraging other women out there and also make those dreams come true. And thank you for helping her to do that. Thank, thank so you. So glad to have you on set today, really inspiring. And if you'd like more information, you can also visit us at thebalancingact.com or get social, log on to Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act Fans. Quick off the top of your head, what's your credit score? You're not sure? You're not alone. Most of us just don't know what our credit score is or how to find out. What's worse, lots of us don't really understand why a credit score is so important. Well, all that's about to change this morning. We're going to welcome Scott Lascelles, Chief Marketing Officer for Springleaf Financial. Good morning. Good morning, Olga. So let's talk about credit score and why it's important. I'm already talking to my children about it, and they're only 11 and 13. Yet your credit score impacts so many parts of your life people aren't aware of. So everyone knows it will impact you getting approved for a loan. You apply for a credit card, a car loan, you get a yes, no decision based on your credit score. It also impacts the rate you'll pay. The lower your credit, the higher your rate. But what people don't know is it actually impacts if a landlord is going to charge you a larger deposit or not. When you get a cell phone, they ask for your social security number because they're pulling a credit bureau report. Utility companies, even insurance companies in determining your premium use your credit score. It's like a background check, and when I was growing up, my mom used to always tell us, if you can't afford it, don't buy it. You don't want to be up to here in credit. You don't want to have a bad credit score, and I've lived by that rule. I think I've got a pretty good one, um, and, and it's empowering for me to have a good score because I feel like I can go out there, get that loan, and be trusted. Absolutely, but the reality is for most Americans, 50% of them can't raise $2,000 in a month, so they need access to credit. And to get good credit, you need to make sure you know what your credit score is and you take control of it. So let's say I wanna know my credit score today. How would I find out, Scott? Actually, there's a really good website the government had the credit agencies do. It's called annualcreditreport.com. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, if you go there, you can actually get your credit report once a year from TU, Equifax, and Experian. So a good strategy is to go to the website every four months and you can actually check 
three times a year to see what's going on on your credit report. So I just plug in my information and for free I get my score and how I'm doing. Absolutely, it's free. You just have to enter your name, address, and social security number. And then when you log in, you can check to see if that credit card was actually opened in your name, if there's any reporting errors, mm. and if you're delinquent on cards you weren't aware of. So let's say the credit score is bad. You've been late on some payments, some tragedy has occurred. I'll give you an example. I have a family member that just got divorced. Credit has gone down the drain. Then what? Bad credit happens to good people. Life happens. It's not that it happens, it's how we deal with it. So there's five things that really impact your credit score that you can do to focus on to improve it. The first is your payment history, paying your bills on time. I'd recommend enrolling yourself in on-time bill payments. The second is how much debt or utilization you have. The third is how long is your credit history. Uh, the fourth one is credit mix. If you have an auto loan, a credit card, you want to have a few different types on your credit bureau. And the last is how many inquiries you have. In other words, you don't want to go out when you need credit and apply for three or four loans at a time. That actually will hurt your credit score. And what are my options if I need to apply for a loan and I have bad credit? There's a lot of options. People have more options than they think. They don't have to take whatever's offered to them. So you have options like using your car as collateral, getting a secured loan. Okay. What we do at Springleaf is we sit down with our customers. We have 800 branches, over 5,000 employees in the field. They sit down with you and they'll do a budget to see what you can afford and what type of loan is right for and you. And to make sure you can pay it back. Absolutely. We want to do business with people that can pay their bills and that can pay us back. The other thing we do is we have a seven day money back guarantee on your loan. There's no high pressure sales with us. When you come in, if the loan wasn't right, Right, you can return it within a week. The second thing is, in every branch, we have a prominently displayed customer bill of rights. So you know that we're going to treat you properly and fairly as we should. Thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate your time. Thank and you. if you would like to learn more and learn more about your credit score or learn about loans, log on to thebalancingact.com. We've got all the information there. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This is rice. It's renewable, sustainable, traceable, nutritious, and versatile. You're watching Quick Bites. Stay tuned. September is National Rice Month. Welcome to my kitchen, and this is Quick Bites with me, Chef Ralph Pagano. Joining me in the kitchen is Robin DeVore with Riceland Foods to give us the big story on this little grain. So Robin, I hear you're all the way from Arkansas to come up and see me right now. A long way, but did you know we're the number one rice producing state in the whole United States? I had no idea that Arkansas was growing rice. Tell me about it. We're a cooperative of family farmers. We're family farmer owned, and it's almost 6,000 guys and gals raise the rice. They grow it, they bring it to us in the rough state. We mill it, we package it, and ship it all around the United States and around the world. And the money that we make goes back to them. Namaste. So, exactly. So when you buy Riceland rice, you are supporting a farmer. I like that, supporting a farmer. Now, when I make Riceland rice, I always cook a little bit too much because I got a little heavy hand, right? Sure. And here's a dish that I make that my grandmother taught me, okay. which is really cool. It's a little bit of heavy cream, Parmesan cheese, pecorino cheese, cream cheese. You put them all together with the rice, put it into a baking dish, slide it into the oven, which I've already done. I've mixed it all up over here. Now check this out. Okay. You get very excited. Can't wait. Oh, boy. I'm going to pull it out over here. Now... I don't know if you know, we've got a crew and they're hungry around here. I see them. Uh, but you and I, I've got a special one for us right in front of you. Oh, yeah. I'd like you to taste a little of that, put it in your mouth, and tell me what you think. Okay. Arkansas rice tastes good. Oh, my gosh. You had me at cream cheese. <laughs> cream cheese makes it happy. I love it. <laughs> you know, the hardest part of this oh. rice dish is the 15-minute wait that it goes into the oven with, right? But all right. these rices are just one kind of rice, just milled differently, yeah? Yes. Like the brown rice, all it has is the hole removed. And so you've got that nutty, wonderful, healthy bran layer. So that tastes good. Oh, very healthy, nutritious. This? That's milled. All we've done is take the bran layer off of there. Now you've got milled white rice. What we do is we make the starches come together, and it comes out perfect every time. Keep it time. simple, stupid right here. Par parboil. It's called parboil rice. If you don't think that you can cook rice, this is the rice for you. It's going to come out fluffy, never sticky every time. To learn all about rice's versatility, tips on buying and storing it, and to meet the incredible family of farmers who produce it, go to riceland.com or visit our website at thebalancingact.com. So until next time, make some food fun. Thanks, Robin, for joining me. Hey. Anyway, you say let's uh, dig in a little bit more, yeah? Let's go, let's you mind go. mind if I get a little spoon in here? All right, you can get Yeah, yeah, watch that, sweetheart. <laughs> this is grandma's recipe. 
Thanks so much for starting your morning right here with us. Such great information on today's show. It truly was empowering women in so many ways, especially through our Be the Change series. Always more information on our website, thebalancingact.com. We're on Facebook and Twitter, and of course, until the next time. Remember, find your balance. So long, everybody.